Well, to close out our program today, I am honored to be able to introduce first Vice Chancellor Daryl Bazell. Mm -hmm. Vice Chancellor Bazell has long has been a long-term leader in the community and engaged in many different organizations who've supported uh, uh, focusing on children, education, and their advancement. Uh, most recently, he has chaired the board of the directors for the Urban League of Greater Madison and the pre is the president of the board of directors for the Boys and Girls Club of Dane County. And I've asked Daryl to share his perspectives on community engagement and how these have shaped his own outlook in life and perhaps even his uh, role at the university. And I think he's going to be thankful for me not asking him to talk about budget or numbers. <laughs> and then Daryl would introduce our guest speaker, uh, Michael Johnson, the president and CEO of the Boys and Girls Club. So Daryl, thank you for being here. Great, thank you, Nancy. Can everyone hear me okay? Great. Uh, Nancy, I need to start by thanking you for all the great work that you do uh, on behalf of the Mortgage Center. I've gotten to know you uh, quite a bit over the years, and you do just an outstanding job in, in leading the center. Um, I think we all know that the Mortgage Center is just the, the epitome, the, the perfect example of um, learning through doing while at the same time being of service. One, wonderful, wonderful mission. I um, have to thank John and Tasha Mortgage for your wonderful, wonderful support of the university and the Mortgage Center um, specifically. Um, I, I think both of you provide just an excellent example of what it means to be an engaged citizen. In fact, I, I looked that term up in the, in the Webster's and I, I thought I saw your photograph, both of you. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. <laughs> but thank you for all that you do and, and, this, and the work here is just, is just so wonderful. You know, this confluence of um, um, ac academically based service learning, um, community-based research. Um, we're hearing just great, great examples today of how that matters and what difference it makes and the, the matching grants you folks provided, provided just great leverage. And the, just the testimonies today, I mean, it just, just floored me. And so um, clearly this, we need more in this particular area, but we know this model works and you've heard just some wonderful examples of that. And thanks to all of you folks who participate um, in, in these endeavors. Um, the efforts are certainly are, are paying off and we need to see more of this, this type of um, work for sure. Um, as you heard from Nancy, I've spent a lot of my, um, um, let's just say, um, um, off work hours, if you will, we'll call it that, uh, involved in community um, work. Um, I think, as you know, I spent my entire professional career in, in, in public service. And so for me, I, I get the question a lot, why do you do this? You put so many hours in at the university, why do you, spend time in the community. And for me, I, I always give kind of a curious response, but I'll, I'll give you just a little bit of what's behind it. The response is always pretty simple. I can't imagine doing anything other than being a service, whether I'm getting paid or not. And, and so when Nancy asked me just to offer a couple of thoughts about that, I always make some reflecting, you know, why do I do this and why is this part of, you know, who I am? And for me, the answer probably comes to two very basic things. One is, these are the values that were instilled in me throughout my entire life, um, and particularly for my mother. You know, the idea that we're on this earth to, to help and to serve others as, as being a primary purpose is something that's a value that was always ingrained in me throughout my entire life, so I could never imagine being on this earth and not doing something to help others. And, and so that, that's certainly one place where, where my passion comes from. The other comes from the experience. Um, some of you know my background. I, I kind of grew up on both sides of the, of the proverbial railroad track and um, lived through some very, very difficult times. I can, I've used the Boys and Girls Club examples as, as, as you know, Mike is going to talk to you about some of his work in just a moment. Um, I remember a time living in the South, living on government commodities. We all remember government commodities. That's the thing we had before food stamps. You remember those? Um, and that's what we lived on. That was, we didn't have other food. That, that was everything. And so for me, there was a boys and girls, excuse me, a boys club, it wasn't a boys and girls club in those days, down the street, an old abandoned church was, was their headquarters, but it was a place, to, to, it was a safe place to go, a place where all my friends were, uh, a place where we got involved in activities and connected with adults who, who cared. And, and along this theme, some of the adults I, I, that came and touched my life were students at North Carolina State University at the time in the, in the community where I lived. As my family moved to Milwaukee, similar difficult experiences, and once again, the, the, the boys club, I was right around the corner, was a, a good place to go. Um, lots of activities, lots of places we went, and got to know lots of athletes who used to hang out at the club. That was kind of cool as a, as a teenager. But you know, having um, been someone who was served, if you will, 
by community-based organizations, I, I, I really saw the value and the power of it. And as I, I think I've shared this with Michael, I never saw myself as staying in Mass when I graduated from college. I always thought I was going to go back to Milwaukee and work for a nonprofit. That was always where my passion and interests were. Of course, um, government service interrupted that, and I'm certainly uh, appreciative of, of the opportunities I've had in, in, in public service, but um, I just can't think of a more important aspect of what we do than, than the work that, that's being talked about um, here today. The connection we make with the community is, 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 is so important. I know our students value greatly you know, from these efforts, and we heard that from a couple of our, our, our students um, right now. Um, the experiences you're getting will last you, you know, for a, a, a lifetime. We know the students who get involved in this type of service um, do better academically. And as I mentioned, um, I, I, I think the memories you're going to have um, will benefit you for a lifetime. There, there's no question about that. Um, but while you're learning from these experiences, um, you're serving as ambassadors to this university and serving as, as great role models um, for this university. I, I see students in the Boys and Girls Club all the time and some of the other um, community-based groups I, I, I work with. No more important time in our history than for students to be engaged in this type of work and to serve as role models for young people. I think as we all know, I think back in my high school days in Milwaukee, one could graduate from high school or not and move on and, have a, and enjoy a nice, nice lifestyle working in a factory in Milwaukee. Those jobs aren't there anymore. We know that in the, in the economy of today and tomorrow, um, post-secondary education is essential is essential for all of our young people. And so for our young people in the community to see UW-Madison students in the community serving as role models and connecting with young people is, is, is incredibly powerful in, in and of itself. And so thank you for, you know, for what you do. Um, I, I think the last thing I'll say before I introduce Michael, just to acknowledge the obvious, that I think the work we do here is probably the best manifestation of the Wisconsin idea I can think of. Um, at this university, the idea that our mission extends beyond the bounds of this campus to the community, the state, and beyond. Those words are hollow unless we can live those words in our own community, the own place, physical place where this university, you know, exists. And so I, the Morcus Center, I think, is the centerpiece and sits right at the heart of that local um, public service outreach mission, if you will. Um, so with that, let me, I have the great pleasure of introducing uh, Michael Johnson, someone I, I think most, if not all of you know. Uh, Michael's been in this community, I think, for three years, mm -hmm. about three years now. I've had a pleasure of serving as this board president for two of those years. And I, I, I think all of us know, know Michael as someone with great energy, great passion, and commitment to young people um, in our community. Um, Michael, I, I read an article recently that it said five people to watch in Madison. At first, I thought it was five people are going to watch Michael because he's <laughs> he's everywhere, <laughs> and it takes at least five people to keep up with with, with, with this energy. Um, but Michael has, has, has contributed greatly. He was named the um, Boys and Girls Club Midwest Executive of the Year um, this past year, and um, it's just been a pleasure and a treat to really work with someone with his energy, his his passion and commitment to young people in this community. So, with that, let me bring up. Michael Johnson, the CEO of the Boys and Girls Club of Dane County. Michael. I always get nervous to uh, speak behind uh, Daryl. All the kids at the Boys and Girls Club think he's uh, President Obama. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, so Daryl Darryl has uh, provided tremendous leadership uh, to the Boys and Girls Club. And, uh, it was a pleasure um, serving um, under him uh, during his time, and he has really pushed uh, our organization to a, uh, a whole nother level. Um, I am really passionate about this work and, and firmly believe that it takes a village to uh, raise our young people. And you're looking at somebody who, um, who grew up uh, in public housing in Chicago and it was, you know, universities like this, United Way, the Boys and Girls Clubs, the community partners that played a very instrumental role in my life. And so I talk about this story all the time, you know, as a kid growing up in Cabrini Green, and I believe that there was four things that played a, a key role in my life. And I think the only reason I stand before you uh, today is because of four primary factors. One. Uh, I came from a single family household where my mother was a force to be reckoned with. Uh, two, 
Um, I was a member of the Boys and Girls Club 3. Uh, there was a business owner that owned a grocery store in my neighborhood. Uh, his name was Peter Goshes. Pete says he's about five foot seven, but he's really about five foot three. And Peter Goshes was a Greek American a business owner that owned a grocery store in our neighborhood. And it was him who exposed uh, me to uh, different opportunities outside of my community. I had never left the projects ever in my life until he took me to a local university. It made me believe that I was college uh, material. No one in my family had ever been to college, had never talked about um, college, and so that exposure was so important. And then fourth, uh, I was connected to a community uh, of faith. And so when I think about the work that we do uh, at Boys and Girls Clubs and so many other community-based organizations in this community, it's about how do we holistically serve young people? How do we holistically um, serve their families? And there's a lot of activity that's going on in this community and a lot of people doing a lot of great things. But how do we connect all of our resources to make sure that we're effective? And uh, this university has played a major role in helping the Boys and Girls Club uh, fulfill our mission. And uh, I am so proud that we uh, partner with the uh, Mortgage Center and this university, um, who is one of our premier partners. Uh, this campus have provided uh, interns, staff, and volunteers that have added unbelievable value uh, to the variety of programs that we offer at the Boys and Girls Club. And I believe, and I believe because of the nature of our partnership uh, with the Mortgage Center and with UW-Madison, as a result, out of more than 4,000 clubs across the United States of America, our Boys and Girls Clubs here, right here in Dane County, was ranked one of the top five Boys and Girls Clubs in the country. And, and, and one, one, one of the reasons I believe we got that, uh, that recognition is because of family voices. And uh, boy, uh, who you all know who spoke earlier, retired professor, boys like the uh, vice president of Boys and Girls Clubs. He, he spends so much time up there, you would think that he's on payroll. And boy cares so much. Uh, there's sometimes I'll walk in the building at 730, he's already there working. And so boy, I wanna let you know, I appreciate all that you do for our kids, to Monique, all that you do, to the parents. It is so encouraging to see the number of professors and volunteers at the Boys and Girls Club on Saturday morning willing to serve and to be of service to um, our young people. And it's just absolutely amazing. And our kids, one of the things we didn't want to do, I, I grew up in Boys and Girls Club. And, uh, and while it kept me safe, um, when, by the time I grew up, so when I was in Chicago, I was socially promoted every year. And I ended up getting a football scholarship to go to the University of Minnesota, and I couldn't academically compete. So I got kicked out and I had to go back to Malcolm X College, and it took me four and a half years to get my associate's degree, and it took me eight years to get my bachelor's degree, but once I got my reading and my math up to par, I got my bachelor's and my master's and all these certifications with ease. So we don't want our kids coming to our community centers to shoot pool and to play basketball. We want them to have fun, but we wanna make sure that these babies can read and they can write, because if they can read and they can write, uh, they're, they're, the, the likelihood of them being successful will be greater. So the fact that we have uh, certified tutors and organizations like Family Voices that's coming to the Boys and Girls Club to support these kids is just absolutely uh, amazing. Our partnership with the university have also provided our members with the opportunity to learn about stem cell research and video game programming, which has been amazing uh, for our young people. Watching these kids create video games from scratch is just an amazing um, sight to see. Also, our partnership uh, with UW Slow Foods is also uh, amazing. Um, we used to, at the Boys and Girls Club two years ago, uh, we used to have deep fryers inside of our Boys and Girls Club, and we deep fried everything. It smelled like KFC on steroids in that place. <laughs> And so we got with a local uh, business owner and we said, we want to throw these deep fryers out and we want to bake everything inside of our Boys and Girls Club. 
And so the kids didn't like it. We got rid of the soda machines. And then we were like, and you're going to grow your own food. <laughs> and so uh, the kids just was not feeling it. And so uh, the students from this university uh, got with our team and our staff, and now we have two community gardens at both of our boys and girls clubs. And our kids are growing food and having a family chef night and to see all the university um, students working with our kids is just absolutely uh, phenomenal. And I'm really, really proud of uh, that partnership. I'm also proud uh, to the point that we reached out to Nancy uh, a few months ago through Daryl. And um, our board, through Daryl's leadership, said, you know, we have to do something very audacious for these kids. And our kids have to graduate from high school because the reality is the college, the college degree is like the new high school diploma. And our kids have to graduate from high school and they have to receive a post-secondary education. So we spent about a year interviewing people from the United Way to the mayor, to the county executive, to parents. I mean, Daryl was like, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. This guy's a tough guy to work for. And we spent the year coming up with all this data around how we were going to uh, lead the new direction of Boys and Girls Clubs. So uh, uh, Daryl connected us to Nancy. We found an MBA student uh, who was connected uh, to this center. And as a result, we created an 80-page business plan that now maps out the new strategic direction of Boys and Girls Clubs. And our big, hairy, audacious goal is that boys and girls clubs will graduate 90% of our kids and they will receive a post-secondary education. Now, we, thank you. So, so somebody said, well, how do, you, how do you do something like that? School districts won't even you know, put that kind of data out there. But we're gonna hold ourselves accountable. So we created a six-year, $15 million plan, and we're gonna go out and ra raise those resources. Two, we have a track record of doing that. So if you look at our Avid Tops program, uh, there's a study that we do with this university every single year for the last four years. That study through WISC shows that the Boys and Girls Club kids, their attendance is better, their, uh, their GPAs are better, they're, take, they're taking more rigorous courses, and the students that's in that program are traditionally students who don't academically perform well in our, in our schools. So either we have to invest um, um, in these kids' lives right now or we're gonna pay later. If a young person don't graduate from high school and don't graduate from college and end up becoming a unproductive citizen, you as taxpayers are gonna pay $230,000 in public expenses over that young person's lifetime. So when I look at the 10,000 kids that we wanna serve, uh, we're talking about $1,000 per year, per child, to help these kids graduate from high school and go to college. And we would not have been able to produce that plan if it was not for this center. And so far we have raised 2.4 million um, of that $15 million plan. And Nancy, if it was not for that young lady that you sent to us, I don't think we'll be even at the two million mark. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your leadership around that. Let me uh, also say because of some of these partnerships we learned, uh, there's, there's so many interns that come over to the Boys and Girls Club. The athletic department sends students over there all the time. Many of you all probably knew Rob Wilson. Uh, the Big Ten Network did a great story on him. And he now works at the Boys and Girls Club every single day after he graduated you know, from this university. He wanted to be around kids. He enjoyed being around kids. And when I see all of the programs that's taking place now, uh, we just learned last week because of our Avid Tops program and our college club program, many of you all may or may not know, we have about 60 staff that's working in seven schools in classrooms with teachers. Um, every single day supporting them, taking kids on college field trips, providing them with ment uh, 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 mentors and internships. Some of our kids did internships right here in this center. We want to expose these kids to uh, opportunities. Kids see 
the LeBron James, even my son, what do you want to be? Dad, I want to be LeBron James. I don't want to be you, you know? <laughs> and so, but he sees LeBron James and these kids see Lady Gaga and that's who they want to be. But they don't see the Nancys or the Daryls of the world that's running major organizations. They don't see the people that's running, you know, track or running local organizations in our, in, in our communities. And we have to be able to expose our kids uh, to those opportunities. And then finally, uh, we did something very unique, in my opinion, uh, a, few, a few months ago uh, in partnership uh, with the Division of Diversity, Equity, and Educational Achievement. And I, in my opinion, I think you have one of the best uh, diversity officers um, in this country, and Dame, Damon Williams. Uh, Damon approached me a few months ago, and uh, our kids said, hey, you know, uh, if you really want to reach some of these at-risk teenagers, you know, you got to put a music studio inside of the Boys and Girls Club. And so in my mind, I'm thinking, put some pads on the wall, get a couple of speakers and a microphone, and you're done with it. So we ended up partnering with uh, Full Compass, a couple of uh, Fendorf, and we built out this state-of-the-art, you know, music studio. And I'm being told it's one of the best music studios in the county. So you walk in there, our kids, our drumline kids who perform all over the state, now have a studio where they can record music. They can learn how to produce a marketing and a business plan. And we're partnering with the chief diversity officer to provide interns and also partner with their first wave students so they can interface with these young kids at the boys and girls clubs to start connecting them to this campus. And then I just want to conclude that, um, our kids in this community can be great and we can open up great doors um, for these young people. And when I hear all of these organizations that are in this community doing great work, if we could somehow as a community, the last few years uh, there's been this very, uh, in, some, in some cases there, there's people like in this room that work really hard, investing their time, their talent, and their treasure to support young people. There are some people in this community that just talk a good game and do nothing and have become very divisive. And what I have been asking people is, let's figure out a way uh, to work together, whether you're comfortable with the person that you know across the table or uncomfortable with the person that you know across the table. Let's figure out a way to work with one another. Let's figure out a way to inspire our kids and open up doors for them. And I think when, when we work together, we can do great things for young people in this community. And so, Nancy, I just want to say thank you to you and your team. Daryl, thank you for, for connecting this university uh, to the community. I feel very honored as somebody, as somebody who have only been here three years, uh, I am amazed to see the support that we get uh, from the students, from the faculty, from the administrators to your community relations folks. Uh, I am just very, very pleased to see the support that our young people get. And I'm very thankful and very humble. And I'm looking forward to the next five years. I want to be able to come up here five years from now and say, because of you, 90% of our kids did graduate from high school and go on to college. Thank you so much. Wow, <laughs> I don't know how to, to close after that. I can't thank you know, un, both enough for the, the heartfelt, the uh, comments on Daryl, on your reflections on the importance of engagement in your life and at the university and Michael, your wonderful energy and both of your leaders and inspiration to all of us. And thank you for your kind words. And as you know, it takes a team. It is not me, it is Mary Rouse, it was Michael Thornton, uh, Randy Waller, Beth Tryon, the whole team at the Mortgage Center to pull all this together and to make it happen, um, including all of our faculty, staff, and student partners. So uh, it's, it really does take a village all the way around. Well, I, I will close out today with a couple of comments. Uh, we've heard an amazing 
uh, amount of work that has gone into creating the partnerships, amazing people, uh, students, and partners. And it takes patience, persistence, commitment to make these partnerships and relationships happen. And when all is said and done, it really is about the relationships that we form with each other uh, in within the university, outside the university, and between the university and the community. And I think that it's this strength that we have, our ability at this university because of the Wisconsin idea, uh, because we believe in that, we, our students believe in it, our staff, our faculty, and our partners believe in it, that we can make things like this happen. I think we have a, a lot to do in the future to keep this going, to keep the energy around it, to continue to reward it for faculty and for staff, to ensure that it is part of the uh, tenure guidelines moving forward in the future and that it is truly something that is valued uh, at all levels within the university. Our summit today went so smoothly, uh, in, for the most part, in uh, uh, no small part, due to two people, and this is Carrie Anton and Randy Waller. With you two, we both stand for a minute. Carrie is our new marketing director, and Randy Waller, our associate director. And then I would like to have all of our students and interns who are scattered, I think, all around. Maybe they're outside now. Students, interns, would you all stand? And our staff, Megan, Beth, anybody else to the left, thank you for all your help today. <laughs> and last but not least, I would like to thank John and Tasha again for your unwavering support for the Mortgage Center and indeed for this entire university. Uh, they, you, have truly built the bridge that connects the university to the community. So thank you again for all of your support.